Hello, hello, more Dimers here and welcome to another tournament played online, this time organized by San Luis Chess Club and this is Champions Showdown uh, and this is quite unusual because it's played in the Chess 960 format. So uh, what is the difference? We have the different configuration of pieces. It's completely random. Uh, so sometimes it's called Fisher Random. That was the first um, name for this um, chess format. Uh, and I would like to introduce you the players. So as it's organized by San Luis Chess Club, we have four Americans. So uh, we have the current world champion in Chess 960, Wesley So. We have Lenier Dominguez, Fabiano Caruana and Hikaru Nakamura. We also have Magnus Carlsen, who is number two in the Chess 960. He lost um, in the final uh, to Wesley So, uh, but he is with us. And we have superstar Gary Kasparov, 57 years old, a huge enthusiast of Chess 960 and um, definitely everybody wanted to see how Gary plays. Uh, we also have Levon Aronian from Armenia, Peter Sfiedler from Russia, Maxime Vasil Lagraf from France, and Ali Reza Firuzia, 17 years old, prodigy from Iran. He is often invited to tournaments online and, uh, and he plays under the FIDE flag for now. And let's see, let's analyze the, the position a bit. So the players had a couple of minutes to analyze that. Uh, I think the three minutes or, or, or something. Uh, and from what I seen in the cameras, they could do some consultation. I'm not sure about that, but they definitely were talking to someone or maybe to themselves. Uh, if you know anything about that, leave the comment. I'm, I'm, I'm also very interested what's, what exactly are the rules. Uh, and uh, this is kind of preparation. It's definitely the preparation because you cannot do home preparation for 960, you know, different beginning configurations. That's, a, that's almost impossible. But definitely players would like to get to the positions which they know and understand. So they have a couple of minutes to analyze. Now, what is going on here? It's, it, it looks like it's a warm up because we have the king on E1. So pretty natural position for the king. We have also the bishop on H1. So this is very nice, you know, fianchetted bishop uh, on the longest diagonal. So pretty natural one. We have also the rook on d1. So it's possible, for example, to castle and have the rook on d1 uh, supporting the, the d4 move and d5 move, of course, uh, and also the rook on d1. Uh, also supporting g4 maybe in the future however they're not gonna be the knight for example on f6 so it's uh, maybe unlikely the biggest issue is of course the knight on a1 that's the biggest issue what to do with this knight definitely that's the worst knight ever so this knight uh, has to be developed somehow and the queen Gary Kasparov in the interview said that the queen is the biggest issue because you have to place it very very smart way you can you know develop that but in the in the crazy positions this queen can be in some unusual dangers and, uh, and yeah that, so that's what we know uh, so without further ado I would like to show you the game between Ali Reza Firuzia, who's gonna play as white and Gary Kasparov who's gonna play as black 40 years difference you know uh, between the players so let's see what happened on the board we have g3 as i said very natural so with one move only white already you know fianchetted the bishop on the longest diagonal we have d5 controlling the center and d4 so alireza also want to control the the central squares as definitely gary would love to play something like c5 or e5 and you know get the the control of this over the center we have g6 so now opening the diagonal for the dark square bishop as well uh, and now knight c3 so alireza already attacks the the pawn on the on the d5 uh, and here gary could go for for defending the pawn with the with the knight b6 however he played c6 and everybody was pretty much surprised as now the knight cannot jump for example to c6 and, and put the pressure on them on the central d4 pawn so gary has a different idea here um, after knight b3 first he played f5 
So uh, kind of Marozzi bind. He controls e4 as Alireza would love to play something like, you know, e4, uh, but it's not possible for now. So Alireza prepares that. We have f3 and now knight c7. So this knight uh, gonna move somewhere, definitely not on b6. So that's the another surprise. Uh, but for Gary, this is the plan. Uh, he want to bring the knight to the to the e6, put the pressure this way on d4. It's not easy to defend the d4 as you see now, uh, and bring another knight this way uh, to c4. So that's the plan. Uh, and also, if e4 is played, for example, then what Gary can do is take the pawn and the rook gonna be very much, uh, you know, playable on the semi-open d5. So this pawn on d4, um, you know, can be in a very, very difficult position. We have queen f2 bringing extra support to that pawn and now we have knight e6 as planned and um, putting the pressure on d4. We have bishop on d2 now preparing to castle uh, and now knight d7 as planned and now in this position Alireza castle. Now how to castle in the in the Fisher random if you don't know uh, exactly the same like in the normal chess uh, the position of rook doesn't really matter uh, because the king gonna jump to c1 and the rook always gonna land on d1 so it doesn't matter where the rook is in this in this case the king gonna go to c1 or to g1 and then the rook gonna gonna go to f1 so the position gonna be um exactly the same like in the regular chess so we have castle this way uh, on the queen side and now knight b6 as planned we have king b1 so alireza moved the king to the safety and now queen f6 creating the interesting battery a lot of pressure for example on on d4 but also if this pawn disappears and um, and for example the knight is moved there are some mating ideas on b2 so alireza moves bishop to c1 now defending b2 and also making a space uh, for the rook on the on the d file uh, and now we have knight c4 very nice outpost for the knight rook g to e1 preparing um, e4 uh, and now castle by gary kasparov so look how the castle look like boom we have the castle uh, and now queen g1 and here in this position, you know how to continue because if black tries to wait and play some 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 moves like bishop g7, it's extremely dangerous now. For example, look at this e4, and how do you continue? F takes on e4, um, F takes on e4, and black cannot take this pawn. Can you imagine? Uh, it's it's very tricky position. D takes on e4, rook f1, and the queen is trapped. So it's it's extremely important also where you put the queen uh, in the openings because you know your queen can be trapped very easily. This bishop controls g5, the, the pawn controls uh, also the, this pawn controls and as you see the queen has nowhere to go. So a very, very tricky one. This is why first we have f4 by Gary Kasparov. So if e4 is played, then of course he can take n pass out. We have g takes on f4 and knight takes on f4. So very nice place the, the knights. Uh, but now uh, e4 was possible. Uh, however, uh, after d takes on e4, uh, white would have to play probably rook e4. That would be more precise. Now the knight is under attack twice and then defended by the queen first. So uh, something like knight h3 would have to be played. But then queen e1 and there is a lot of pressure, for example, on e7. And the uh, position of white is a uh, pretty much uh, very good. This is isolated pawn. It it's, looks like a weakness. However, it's defended and also it can be moved in the right moment and the, and the bishop can enter the game as well. Uh, however, Alireza Firuja uh, didn't think that he is prepared. He's ready for that. First, e3, kicking the knight, as the knight in the center is, uh, you know, always an issue. So, knight h3 by Gary, uh, attacking the queen. We have queen g3 
three. Uh, and for now, the knight is defended, so there is no problem. However, Gary sends that, okay, this knight is not really well placed. We have queen g5 asking to exchange the queens, and if the queens are exchanged, then of course the knight can jump to g5 uh, and help to control e4. So e4 cannot be played, also put some pressure on f3 together with the rook, then white would have to react somehow. Uh, we have rook f1, now bringing extra defender to, to f3 just before it's too late uh, maybe prepare to take the the the, the queen uh, but now gary kasparov exchanged the queen so queen g3 h takes on g3 and now e5 so striking in the center now eliminating this weakness and um, which stayed behind we have uh, d takes on e5 actually in this position uh, this is move 17 and it's it's completely different that than in a normal chess where you know players uh, have the pro home preparations and they know all the moves they're gonna do but here the players really have to be very very precise you know where to put the pieces to to get the, some impact on the game so uh, gary kasparov has eight minutes on the clock eight minutes he already spent 12 minutes out of 20. there is also five uh, seconds incrementation and alireza firuzia believe me or not three minutes on his clock he spent most of his time 17 minutes only three minutes on his clock uh, in this position very complex position we have d takes on e5 and now gary started to think and he was thinking like three minutes we have bishop e5 uh, and now how to continue we have f4 weakening the light squares and uh, and it's a it's a it's a still very very tricky position so for example what gary could do everybody expected okay uh let's just take the the knight bishop c3 b takes on c3 and then continue the game because this knight is a very nice place knight okay it cannot be it can be exchanged for another knight uh but otherwise it's it's almost the monster knight and this pawns definitely the, the structure of the pawns are messed up however how to continue how to get any advantage let's say rook f to e8 uh, but e4 can be played anyway because after d takes on e4 the rooks can be uh, you know exchanged this way bishop e4 and uh, black didn't achieve anything much the position is quite open and also white has the pair of bishops so it's it's not you know so clear you know what black actually achieved this bishop can come to d3 uh, and this knight will have to be moved okay so um that's the first problem so this is why gary said bishop g7 my bishop is a good piece there is no reason you know to exchange a good pieces and in this position alireza went for rook d to e1 uh very sneaky idea because this knight was staying on h3 like okay it's it's you know very very silent knight there but you know there is the issue for example the rook could come to e2 and um, attack the the knight and the knight has nowhere to go together with the bishop how to defend that knight that is the problem there is a serious problem the knight has nowhere to go all of the squares are controlled by white so after rook d to e1 we had g5 now going to to help the knight of course g4 is coming so we have bishop g2 uh, attacking the knight and here actually gary had a very nice tactic knight a3 however he probably didn't want to exchange this this knight on this um, very nice outpost uh, the point is that the king cannot be moved because of the of, of the fork so uh, b takes on a3 is forced and then bishop could take on c3 so the pawn structure is messed up and uh, black still maintains the, the pair of bishops. So th that was possible. Uh, but Gary Kasparov didn't go for that. He played bishop f5 instead. And now uh, what is this bishop doing on f5? It looks like, okay, developing piece and um, e4 is, is controlled by this bishop. However, that's not true because this bishop has to uh, support the, the knight on h3 so it doesn't do anything in the center so actually e4 could be played immediately uh, and after d takes on e4 
what white could do is take the take the pawn uh, with the knight or even with the rook that was also possible uh, but f takes on g5 would be even stronger so the knight would not have the support anymore by, by the pawn and now if black plays something like e3 then of course we have a very simple tactic rook f5 and after rook f5 bishop h3 rook e5 and white has two pieces for the rook so definitely better position and if this bishop is moved back for example c8 still keeping an eye on the on the bishop then the position start to get very very nasty for example knight e4 uh, rook d to e8 and now this knight can jump to f6 and after exchanging uh, then rook e8 first uh, and then after g takes on f6 king f7 uh, white has a much better position the the simplest way to just just to continue is rook h1 let's say uh, knight f2 and continue from that position now what is going on first white has the pair of bishops that's the first thing uh, also extra pawn very important extra pawn uh, and also the king is in the safety the king is in the safety so the position of black is very difficult also this rook is very active keeping at pressure on b7 and so on so e4 actually could be played by alireza firuzia this was actually the the strongest move in the position however alireza went for knight d4 attacking this bishop and now the bishop could go for example to g4 but it was possible for example the variation like that uh, you know attack the the knight the knight has to be moved knight f2 and now the knight doesn't have really good squares here so that would be probably a um, threefold repetition which could be you know uh, pretty good for for ali reza as his position you know starts to be uh, a, a bit shaky gary really you know has a lot of initiative from the beginning and um, and so on so um, after knight d4 Gary decided to exchange one of his bishops uh, and he played bishop d4 we have e takes on d4 so now Ali Reza got his pawn structures um, you know fixed a bit because he had the uh, very weak pawn on e3 and now there is no issue with that and he can control for example the the e file uh, we have g4 so at least gary got you know some protection for his knight he don't need to worry about that and now we have b3 so alireza says okay i don't want to see your knight uh, on this um, on this very nice outpost we have knight d6 gary saying i'm gonna jump probably to e4 but alireza said bishop a3 no no you're not gonna do that we have rook f7 now unpinning uh, but now rook e5 very nice outpost for the rook this time because this rook cannot be really easily attacked the, the knight cannot go to to c4 the knight for now cannot go to f7 and also this rook is stuck on f7 it cannot be moved because uh, the rook is watching and the bishop and this rook is guarding this this bishop okay so that is a that is a pretty much problem of course it's guarded also by the by the knight but the knight is under attack so keep in mind that's a very complex position very nice move rook e5 very very beautiful knight e4 is not possible knight e4 is not possible because after exchanging everything of course white gonna win the pawn so pretty easily so not possible this is why gary kasparov went for h5 so he sees that his position is very very passive he wants to create you know any counterplay so definitely h5 h4 and now attack them the base of this of this little chain and uh, this pawn could be very very vulnerable and also if white decide to take the pawn then black would have the then you know past pawn this way or another there are the options to create the past pawn so this is what Gary Kasparov wants to do uh, we have king b2 king g7 and now Ali Reza would like to remaneuver his knight uh, for example to to these squares and eliminate them the bishop on f5 but there is the problem this knight uh, at that time can for example jump to e4 and that would be uh, that would be possible this is why first eliminate the knight so bishop d6 we have rook d6 and only now knight d1 with the idea of knight e3 
We have rook e6 now uh, asking to exchange the rooks and Ali Reza said, okay, we can exchange the rooks, but my position is so active. Then I play knight e3 and you are forced. Uh, you have two options. You can play, you know, rook e2 f6, but then I'm going to dominate them the e file, which is not really great. So Gary Kasparov decided to exchange the rooks and Ali Reza got very nice protected past pawn. So this is very nice, very strong past pawn. Also, this is also past pawn and also protected. However, Gary has already some idea here. So he played King G6. And now this is the critical moment um, of the game because h4 is coming this way or another um, h4 is coming uh, probably king c3 and uh, king d4 the most active way to continue maybe even this way that that would be you know very tricky probably b6 would have to be played uh, king d4 uh, rook d7 just to play something like um, c5 but then you know b4 and, and, and a bit of you know strategic uh, thinking here Th this was of course possible um, the point is that the king is in the center very active and black doesn't have much choice here okay so white uh, for example in the future could play c4 c4 for now it would not be possible yet uh, but after a couple of exchanges wh why not because this king would like to support these pawns and um, that would be possible but for now the position definitely would be much better for white however Ali Reza went for c4 uh, and this is pretty strange move because first of all, it allows uh, Gary to play d4. So he creates the pass pawn in the center. Maybe Ali Reza told, okay, it's not so dangerous. For now, it's supported by, by this bishop on the diagonal. But of course, I can exchange that. So um, Ali Reza exchanged that. We have knight f5. King f5 and Gary got the very active king in the center and Alireza still has the center far far away from the action and there is no time actually to bring them bring the king to the action it's just too slow so Alireza try rook e1 uh, and here actually Gary tricked <laughs> tricked Alireza literally in the better position uh, Gary tricked Alireza uh, he played h4 and say okay now you have to think uh, what you're gonna do uh, e6 is not possible uh, simply because rook e7 and there is no continuation rook e5 is possible king f6 uh, g takes on h4 uh, but then simply you know exchange all the pieces uh, and after h5 even you can try to run with this pawn but knight f4 now h6 try to run with the pawn but it's all too slow king f6 and king is on the time and uh, and black gonna win that game bishop e4 let's say g3 and this pawn gonna advance and win the game so that's not even possible this is why Ali Reza played bishop e4 uh, and now it's a very tricky position after king e6 how to continue Ali Reza told okay he was he had the, you know less than one minute on his clock uh, and it's very obviously you know a good move to play something like f5 f5 and if black decide to take the pawn then white can win at least the exchange so it's obvious choice what else to play uh, bishop g6 could be probably better because now uh, Gary would have to think what to do with this rook and if he plays something like rook g7 this is losing he cannot play something like rook g7 because now f5 comes with the protection to the bishop and the check so uh, king e7 is not possible because of the fork so uh, king d7 and after f6 uh, what you're gonna do with the rook rook g6 e6 with check uh, king e8 now f7 and it looks like everything is under control but rook f1 and white actually gonna uh, promote and get the queen and and black cannot do anything about that cannot stop that so it's it's a pretty tricky position okay rook f6 uh, or anything uh, this of course is, is is winning so after bishop g6 what gary would have to play is there, there is some, you know, engine line like like rook f4 with these two pawns. So that, that was one of the options. But more human move would be rook f8. And then after f5, uh, king e7, g takes on h4, let's say g3. And this pawn actually can try to, uh, you know, advance, but it's not so easy. Let's say f6, king e6, bishop h5. 
g2 is not possible now because of the of the bishop g4 forking the the king and the and the knight so that's not possible uh, knight f4 bishop g4 king f7 and uh, and after rook g1 let's say g2 bishop f3 uh, rook g8 and it's uh very complex position however black stands slightly better this pawn doesn't really have protection this pawn is also a bit weak it could be pushed however the king is still in the center closer to the white king so this is why black would be in the slightly better position but as you see that could be very very tricky so bishop g6 probably for Ali Reza but he went for f5 and now asking Gary what do you want to do are you gonna take the, the pawn on e5? Uh, and the point is that Gary cannot, you know, even play something like king e7 because he gonna lose the game because after f6, king e6, everything looks fine. But what white have in this position is bishop d5. Bishop d5 winning the game, okay? Uh, C takes on d5, C takes on d5, there is a check. So king d5 has to be played and after e6, this pawn gonna win the game so rook f6 e7 and this this pawn literally cannot be stopped okay uh it's it's of course winning for for white so uh, you know after f5 gary doesn't even have a choice he has to take on e5 we have bishop d5 now with check and attack on the on the rook so we have king f6 by gary and now bishop f7 so end of the trick Gary Kasparov uh, got what he wanted now what is the point the point is Gary can win you know uh, two different ways first he could go for h takes on g3 immediately so, so just doesn't need to you know even bother um, uh, about this bishop and now g2 is coming g1 is coming it cannot be stopped rook e2 can be met with knight f2 and now you know g2 is coming if the if the knight is taken then the pawn gonna promote uh, if rook e1 then we have knight d3 very nice fork so it's not even possible if the rook tries to be sneaky rook c c2 let's say this way it also doesn't work because after g2 uh, rook c1 we still have this fork just you know a, a slightly different uh, the only way to to continue could be something like king b1 but it also doesn't work because after g2 rook e1 you know trying to stop the pawns maybe win some pawns and uh, there is always knight h3 controlling g1 here is the problem so let's say bishop h5 and here is a little bit tricky position because g1 cannot be played yet that would be a that would be a draw however king f5 first controlling you know uh, supporting g4 and this is winning now and uh, white doesn't have good moves now uh, let's say king c1 and only now uh, win back the material the rook and after rook g1 knight g1 black has two extra pawns past pawn so this this would be winning so uh, that was one way to win maybe a bit more complicated h takes on g3 was possible but gary prefers some simply way so king f7 uh, we have rook e2 so alireza now wants to you know block and win this pawns this way we have h takes on g3 rook g2 uh, but now the king is on time king f6 rook g3 and now king f5 defending the pawn on g4 uh, and here alireza played c5 so he doesn't want of course gary to have the support for the for the pawn now this pawn can be eliminated much easier but now we have king f4 and this rook is on its own the king is still far far away so this is why this was so important to bring the king to the center if the king is in the center in the end game it definitely would not end up this way uh, we have rook d3 now going after after the pawn g3 rook d4 with check and now king e3 asking the rook where you're gonna go we have rook h4 attacking the the knight so knight f2 and now uh, the pawn cannot be attacked from from any of the, of, of the squares because of the uh, of the knight so rook h7 and going after the pawn this way uh, however as i said the king is still too far we have g2 uh, and in this position Alireza Firuja resigned and he resigned because if he goes 
uh, after the pawn the problem is king f3 uh, and then knight g4 and then promotion uh, on g1 so that's not even possible he can you know deliver one check second check but in the next move uh black of course gonna you know uh, create the queen and win the game so after after g2 alireza firuja resigned so gary kasparov got his first win in the first round and i would like to show you uh, what just happened in, in the standing so uh, the first place we have lanier dominguez and magnus carlsen two and a half points both of them won two games and um, and draw one game we have wesley so who has uh, two wins and then we have gary kasparov fabiano caruana levon aronian hikaru nakamura and peter Fiddler one and a half points uh, if you wonder um, how gary kasparov lost he lost to peter Fiddler, and peter Fiddler <laughs> wrote and um, on twitter that he didn't want to you know win over gary kasparov because they are you know good friends and uh, and yeah but that was you know one point is one point even against the friend uh, so if peter Fiddler had the chance to win um uh, over Gary, then why not to do that? Alireza Firuja got only one draw and he lost two games. And Maxim Vasil Lagraf uh, didn't start first day too good. He has uh, zero points. He said in one of the interviews that he feels better over the board with the you know real wooden pieces, not on the not on the computer. He sees the positions a, a bit differently. Uh, but but yeah, that's how the tournaments uh, online are, and we don't have a, a choice if he is invited of course he has to do his best uh, but so far his best is you know zero points out of three games so i hope you like it and if you have some favorite games here let me know in the comment and for now if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss other parts of um, chess 960 press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one